Hello, and welcome back to a new episode of Simply Service Now. I'm Erin Town, and I'm a business process consultant at Volteo Digital. Today, I'm going to help you gain insight into how the configuration management process translates to your day-to-day -day work. As mentioned, I'm Erin, and I have over 15 years of experience in the IT service management space, including nearly 10 years of leading ITSM teams in higher education. For the last five years, I've had the opportunity to work with ServiceNow, mostly with the ITSM and ITOM applications. I'm also a ServiceNow certified system administrator. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. First and foremost, what is configuration management? What is a CMDB? Uh, next, we're gonna talk about the objectives of configuration management. What are you really trying to get out of it? We'll talk about the scope of configuration management. What does it touch within the organization? The functional accomplishments of configuration management on a day-to-day -day basis. What are you actually trying to accomplish in your work? What roles are required for successful configuration management? Who does what? And then what processes have interactions with configuration management? And just a little spoiler, it's a lot. So first of all, what is configuration management? Well, it is the functional process execution of the management of the configuration management database or the CMDB. So what is the CMDB? It's the database that houses all of the assets and configuration items or CIs as you'll hear them referred to within the organization. So it's all of the operational entities that are required in order to complete technical services within your organization. I thought this quote by Thor Heyerdahl, progress is man's ability to complicate simplicity, really hit the mark when it comes to CMDB. I don't think anyone would consider configuration management to be a simple process, mostly because we generally try to overcomplicate it. So the CMD can, CMDB really can be complex and it is easily overcomplicated. There's also often a focus on the data that's coming into the CMDB and the tools, but less about what the day-to-day -day looks like after implementation in order to be successful. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make with their CMDB is to initially ingest data in whatever form they choose, and then to really stop managing it. And if you stop managing it, it becomes stale. Um, it's no longer applicable, and then it no longer feels useful. And a lot of work has gone into implementing the CMDB without actually getting much benefit out of it. So really what are the objectives of the configuration management database and the process of configuration management? Well, first is a focus on services. You really want to identify the data that impacts the services and products that support your business. So we like to say, don't eat the whole elephant. You wanna eat it bite by bite. It can be really exciting to think about all of the inferences that you can make about uh, your processes if you have the type of data that the CMDB provides, but really identifying those principal CI classes and what you really need to have is important. Um, CMDB implementation should happen in phases with really starting at the base foundation layer and then moving on to a crawl approach, a walk, and then eventually a run and fly approach when you really hit that maturity. Another objective of configuration management is to streamline work. So you can use the workflows within the CMDB applications to streamline your work and to create automation. Uh, one example of that is using the Identification Reconciliation Engine or the IRE to automate identifying CI classes and to avoid duplicate CIs. So the IRE actually looks at all new ingested CI data and compares it to what is currently existing based on a unique identifier or several unique identifiers depending on the CI and uh, either creates the new CI or um, updates an existing CI. In addition to that, you can automate the creation of tasks to address your CMDB health, looking for duplicates within your, within your CMDB, looking for orphan CIs that don't have any relationships to other CIs, and then looking for stale CIs that may need to be retired. In addition, you can have uh, creation of tasks via data manager to manage the CI lifecycle and create automation around that as well. Um, so you can retire, archive, or delete CIs uh, based on how long it's been since they've been utilized or touched. 
So then in addition, we want to create a centralized data source. This really means that we have one source of truth for our CI data. Uh, this creates data integrity and uh, fosters data accuracy, and it gives a foundational reference data for the entire organization. The CMDB does not have to be complete, it just needs to be accurate. So what that means is, is that you may have uh, you may have subject matter experts that are certainly not managing their devices via the CMDB. However, it should be the foundational point for anybody in the organization that is not the subject matter expert to have all of the information at their fingertips about that specific CI. And then finally, we want to capture those key interactions. So we want to understand how the data in the CMDB impacts the intersecting processes. So how does one CI compare in the number of incidents and problems compared to another CI? What relationship does that CI have to other uh, applications within the platform? Uh, in addition, you can look at things like how many outages has a specific CI had? What percentage of uptime has a specific CI had? All of these things are things that you can look at within uh, those key interactions. So let's talk about the scope of configuration management. What does it touch within the organization? So first of all, it's going to touch all of the products and the services within the organization. So those products and services all contain service assets. Pieces, uh, the service assets can be considered pieces of the whole that creates a service. Um, so any of the operational CIs that actually are included in those services. And then in addition to that, we're looking at support documentation and processes that are associated with supporting and maintaining the product services and service assets within the organization. So all of these things are maintained within the, within this CMDB. And this includes discoverable and non-discoverable CIs or IT and non-IT CIs. So things like a Linux server would be a discoverable IT CI. Uh, however, something like a business application may just be a definition of a specific application that is required in order for the business to function that then has other CIs that have relationships to it. That create And when creating those relationships, it defines how different pieces of the service assets are actually impacted as other pieces have maintenance or an outage. So now that we've laid the groundwork, what does that really mean for the daily work? So what are we, what is being accomplished in the daily work? So first of all, it's identifying via a phased approach, what CRs are important to the business and then making sure that those are included in the CMDB. So that's figuring out what those principal CI classes are and how those will be identified, how they will be ingested and how the data makes it into the CMDB. And then Second, it's controlling it. So we're verifying that only approved CIs are recorded and we're managing the health of the CMDB via this foundational dashboards and the CMDB health application, including remediating tasks for duplicates, stale uh, duplicate CIs, stale CIs, or orphan CIs. We're recording changes to CIs, including updates to an attribute. So for example, if uh, the OS of a server changes, then we make sure that that information is updated in whatever method is defined by our process. We make sure that the state is maintained. Uh, and this is really called out on its own because the life cycle of the CI is really important. Is that CI installed? Is it under construction? Is it under maintenance? Um, we want to know what state that CI is in and the data manager can help uh, once we want to retire, archive, or delete those. And then finally, we want to audit uh, using data certification to verify the accuracy of the CMDB, especially those non-discoverable or non-IT CIs like business application, application service, business services, contracts, et cetera. Uh, we want to make sure that the ownership of those is documented and remains accurate within the CMDB. Uh, so that we always have a point of contact for them. So then the configuration management, who does what? Uh, so there are several roles that fall within configuration management. The first is the process owner. The process owner is really the person or people uh, that evangelize the, the process, the configuration management process that's been developed. Um, they also help to communicate it. They work with CI owners who may be the subject matter experts 
um, of a specific class of CIs um, and help them to understand how to go about uh, recording changes or additions to the CMDB. And then in addition, we have uh, a configuration manager. The configuration manager is the person who functionally executes the process and maintains the government governance of the CMDB. So they are really assuring that the configuration management activities operate in line with the service level targets that have been put in place by the process owner. They review and analyze the CMDB reports, metrics and trends and figure out where there might be improvements that can be implemented. And they approve requests for new CIs and determine what attribute each class will record. So not every attribute uh, that may be identified for a CI needs to be um, on every CI. And then we have a CMDB admin. This is the person who actually, or people who actually executes requests for changes to the CMDB configuration. Um, and utilizes data manager to bulk update CIs for retirement, deletion, or archival create CMDB queries and dynamic CI groups, and then collaborates with the ServiceNow administrators to make sure that the preferences that are built into the CMDB health are as uh, defined by the process owner. And then finally, we have a CI analyst, or sometimes they're called a class owner. This is generally the subject matter expert for the class. If you go back to referencing the Linux server ad, uh, admin, this uh, may be this, this CI uh, analyst, maybe somebody within the support group for the Linux server class. So they're generally responsible for the CIs that are defined within the scope of their area. Um, so for compute, network, or application. And then they assure that any automated data sources are populating discoverable attributes. And then also, they may also create CMDB queries and dyna dynamic CI groups. Uh, in many organizations that I've had exposure to, oftentimes these four different roles are held by a couple of people. They don't necessarily have to be di four distinct people. Sometimes you'll see a CMDB admin who is also a CI analyst or a configuration manager who has um, all three roles. It really just depends on the size of the organization uh, and the complexity of the CMDB at the time. So I'm not going to go into great detail with this diagram, but I did think it was really impactful to kind of show all of the uh, different roles that we just talked about, how they interact with ServiceNow, and then how the external processes also interact uh, with the different roles. You can access this diagram via Now Create. There is a document called uh, Configuration Management Process where this graphic is held. So as you can probably imagine, configuration management touches many processes within the platform. So as you can see here, uh, this is only some of them, the ones that, uh, that could be fit here, but configuration management really can touch any process in the platform that potentially needs to understand relationship to another CI. So today we've reviewed the objectives and scope of configuration management, what you can accomplish by executing the process, what roles are required to successfully execute, and what processes interact with configuration management. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest ServiceNow best practices and tips. We'll be bringing you more valuable content in the future, so make sure you're part of the conversation. Let us know in the comments what topics you'd like us to cover next. And don't hesitate to share this video with your colleagues who could benefit from this information. See you in our next video.